This is Daniel Smith from Jets Guru. Welcome to the show. All gas, no brakes. Let's go, Jets. Woo! Sometimes it's important for all of us to know what we can and what we can't do, where our strengths lie. Now, I know it's tough. You run a lot of plays. You've got to fight through it. You have to fight through it. Petriot kickoff, Brian Smith. for the bus if that happens on Saturday night. Right for the bus. You, I promise you, I'd cut you right on the field. Cutting him right on the field? Yeah. Well, that stuff is ruthless. What's going on, Jets Nation? CJ the Painkiller, D. Simone here, and you are watching Jets Guru. Now, give it up for your host, Mr. Daniel Smith! What is going on, Jets Guru Faithful? Thank you for joining us once again as we creep closer and closer to the start of the NFL season. I'm super excited for uh, all the fans that have joined us, all our friends from the past. We are trying to do something different. What we're trying to do is we're trying to bring people over. We have 3,000 fans on Facebook. We're trying to pull them over to YouTube. We got the link connected to everything that we do here. Go on our YouTube page, please, Jets Guru, subscribe and log on and share. That is the way that we could benefit the most. That's what gives us legitimacy, and that's what's going to get us more interviews with like people and coaches like Coach Mike Westoff. Now, we're still waiting for Coach to join us, um, so we're going to just keep it rolling from there because there's enough Jet news to keep rolling until Coach is ready, and Kevin will be joining us as soon as he's ready. But, man, I mean – since the last time we spoke, it was, it just felt different, you know, like uh, this season going into the off season, coming in Zach with the extra muscle learning from the off season. Uh, I mean, from the second half of the season last year, they come in uh, into camp. Everyone's really excited. Zach goes out last week, throws an interception on his second pass on an absolutely awful read. He then goes ahead and tries to get a little bit extra running, cuts back inside, hurts his knee, non-contact. Everybody's scared. People don't know what's going on. Most of the time when it's non-contact, you're talking about, um, you know, a serious knee injury, a season-ending knee injury. And knowing the Jets' history with quarterbacks, with just luck, we pretty much thought that Zach was done spared by youth and God, um, this kid somehow avoided complete disaster. Um, it, he's not out of the woods with anything that's going on. And I know people are like, he's going to be back for week one. Guys, he has already had a PCL sprain. Now he's having surgery on his right knee. This is I don't know if anyone's had a serious knee or ankle injury or something or leg injury in general. Each one, you're you're just you're never quite the same. Yeah, you could rehab, you can come back, you could do different things, but you're you're really just a little bit off. And this seems like it's a big part of Zach Wilson's game, right? Being able to run with the football. He did it in college, he's done it so far in the pros. When you roll outside the pocket, especially in this kind of offense, it gives you the option to be able to run, especially with his athleticism, throw on the run, et cetera. And I wonder how he's going to take that now. Second year in a row, the injury just escalated. And again, our, he can't do anything right now. So it's not like he can go out there and practice. So when he finally gets onto the practice field, when he's healed three or four weeks from now, whatever it may be, then he's going to have to build strength in that knee. You don't come off knee surgery and then miss time not working on your craft, which is very physical, against some of the best athletes in the world, and then just throw them back in. 
it would be even different if maybe it was, let's say, midseason, right? Because then he plays the first half of the season, he gets hurt for a few weeks and comes back. He's already got a few games under his belt in the beginning of the year. That is not this. What this is, what this is, is a layoff on the back end, right? Camp. And then two series in a preseason game. That's not enough to bring someone back from a major knee injury because that's exactly what it is. Is it a season ending injury? No. Is it a career threatening injury? No. Is it a serious knee injury? Yes. 100% it is. Just like the sprain was last year. It is just escalated. Same knee, I believe. This is something that we have to be very careful with. Not we, but they, but we're all part of this, right? I'm watching, I'm spending money, I'm doing free shows. I'm waiting for coach. Where is coach? Hey, we got, <laughs> uh, so his agent hit me up. He is yep. in. He just read our link. So he should be popping in any second now. Boom. You Here let me go. know. You let me know when we're ready. We'll yep. introduce coach. Everyone's excited to hear from him. I'm excited to hear from him. Jet fans, sure. the nation out there is ready. JR, coach almost, <laughs> coach almost gave JR a damn heart attack. <laughs> And, and he's freaking out, but no, we're excited to have coach. So just punch him in whenever he's ready um, to go and his sound is good. And we'll get going from there as well as Kevin as well. So Kevin, there you are. So Kevin, before coach pops in, we were just discussing about Zach Wilson, the knee injury, how it is serious. Um, and it's so early in his career, two years in already two knee injuries. Uh, what's your take on long term? Uh, uh just let you know, coach is in now, so. Okay, go ahead and punch coach in, and we'll go ahead and get to this another time. Co okay. Coach, what's going on, coach? Welcome to Jets Guru. Hey, guys. Hey, what's going on, coach? You always gave our producer a heart attack over there. You thought you stood yeah, well, us up. You were, you were, yeah, we didn't have the – I didn't know you were going to do it through Facebook. I thought it was going to just be right through my computer. So you, you guys are too uh, – you're too tech savvy for me. That, that's, okay, that's okay, Coach. We got you here, and that's all that matters. Um, so do me a favor, Coach. Before we even start getting into to Jets football and, and questions or anything like that, tell us what you've been up to lately, and tell us a little bit about your book. Okay. Well, what I've been up to is basically promoting my book. Uh, it's the thing that I – you know, you have to do it when you're, when you're a small – publisher like me you know I'm not a big name obviously and you you so you have a lot of work to do to get the word out and I've spent a great deal of time doing that uh, I enjoy it frankly I kind of like doing it it's not it's fun for me uh, so the, these types of things have been really enjoyable I, I've had I've done a number of podcasts and you guys are kind of taking over radio that's what you're doing it, ESPN don't want to admit it but you're you're stealing their show <laughs> well, it's interesting. It's interesting, Coach, when you look at media, because before in the past, you would have journalists and different things like that, mostly on these shows. Now we see players taking over um, a lot of these spots that journalists have taken over. So I think a lot of people have shifted uh, to audio podcasts, to video podcasts on YouTube. And it seems like um, you've been pretty uh, busy, even though you're, you're out there, Coach. I have, yeah. It's been it's been enjoyable. I have someone that helps me. This gal that helps me. She does a social media stuff for me because I'm 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 Neanderthal with it. But but I'm learning, and and I've enjoyed doing this. Uh, writing the book was a lot of fun. It took me two and a half years. It's something I always wanted to do because I knew I had a very very unique story to tell. A very unique. It just it, it was a one time uh, thing that occurred in the National Football League, and I was a big part of it. So. It was a fun story to tell. It's something I always wanted to write. I read a great deal, though I thought, what the heck? I'll see if I can't get on the other side. And, uh, and I've done that. So it's, uh, it was, it's been very enjoyable for me. Absolutely. So, Kevin, do you have anything you want to ask Coach on uh, his new book, Figure It Out? No, I mean, Coach, Jets fans always know you as, like, a straight shooter. And as you were putting this book together, like how much did you feel you had to reel it back or did you just come with all the grit, like with all the <laughs> uh, gritty details? That, that's a good question. It's a fair question also. Uh, if you're not careful, you're going to get hired at ESPN. You keep asking those good questions. Uh, <laughs> it, um, 
there were times when I wrote things that I went back and reevaluated and decided to, you may be actually a girlfriend, I would read things to her and she'd say, you know, Mike, you might want to dial that down a little bit, you know, just dial it. So I used to call her to dial down. <laughs> so she actually helped me a little bit. I'm not, I'm not interested in really being real critical or, or, or making fun of someone. That's not my goal, but there's a story to tell. And there's parts of it, I think, if you're going to be honest about it, then you have to tell the whole story. And that's what I've always believed in. Um, you know, I came along at this part of the game at very opportune time back in 1982 when all of a sudden, you know, I wasn't a special teams coach. I didn't know anything about it. I'm a, I was a strength coach who worked with the offensive line. I coached tight ends. I did all that stuff. And, and Frank Cush with the Baltimore Colts was going to fire our special teams coach. And I said, I oh, don't fire the guy. You know, it's pretty tough. I said, let me help him. I'll take it over. Oh, okay, Mike, well, way to go. So now I've got it. I didn't know a thing. But what I found out, I found out that it was not very creative. Everything was just pretty much just pedestrian. So I figured that out. I came up with philosophies of how I wanted to do things, which I think were actually pretty, pretty, uh, pr pretty, pretty sharp, pretty smart. I, I was proud of that. And then, then I also realized that there was very little regulation. Though so heck, you could do anything. Though so I started to do everything. And all of a sudden, it developed and developed and developed to a point where that part of the game truly became a third. You know, they always say it's a third of the game. That's, it, it never was, and it is not today. It was when I did it. It really was. We, and it wasn't just me. There were some other coaches that did, that did it very, very well also. But I think I led, I led the charge. And, you know, you look at the years with the Jets. I love New York. I loved my time there. It was fun. And we were pretty doggone good. We were a good football team. People didn't want to play us. Yeah, did, did we, you know, we, we went through some, some crazy times with, with some different situations. But, you know, I, my first 10 years, we're in the playoffs 60% of the time. Come on, we could, we could win. And I know for a fact, I'm sure of this, that what I was able to help do as a special teams coach made a viable contribution to us being a playoff team. And I firmly believe that if we were not as dominant as we had been in that part of the game, we wouldn't have gone to playoffs even one time. We'd have never gone. But you know, we, weren't, we weren't the only reason, of course. Come on. I'm, I mean, you got, come on, we got Curtis Martin carrying the ball. I mean, we're a pretty good football team. But, and then when you look at what's happened and how they, they went away from that philosophy, and since they've gone away from it, they've never been back. Now, I think, I think they've got a chance. I feel a little bit better about this football team, but I loved it. I loved being involved in that part of the game. I loved taking a guy that nobody knew about. You know, here, I'd go find this kid and bring him in, and we not only, we, I could change his life, and we changed the game in the National Football League. It's what Roger Goodell, you know, said on the cover of my book. You know, in the National Football League, Mike Westall changed the game. I'm very, very proud of that. And, uh, but it's changed back now because of all the rule changes. You know, I get asked a number of times, almost every year, you know, coach, you want to come back? I said, no, what am I going to do? Everything I did is illegal. You can't do any of it. So it, it's, I, I wouldn't, I, I, Mike Westoff would not, uh, would, would, would not exist today if he were coaching the National Football League because you couldn't do all the things that I did. So I'm proud of what we did. I'm proud of the accomplishment. I, I love being in New York. I wish we could have gone that one little tiny step more, but you can't tell me that you go back to those times, how much fun it was to be a Jets fan. It was fun. Wait, one follow-up question to that sure. is some of our favorite all-time Jets special team players, right? Joe McKnight, Brad Smith, Leon Washington. You got to coach like a lot of these young men, right? Sure. And now you get to see them coaching like the Leon Washingtons, like of the world. You get to see them like they learned under you and then they go out and they help you know, the next group of young men, like yes. develop and, and find their place in the NFL and make their yes. money, like doing what you have a lot of pride in. How much pride, yeah, how much pride do you take in, in seeing the Leon Washingtons? Do you right, still here, talk here. to oh, him? Here. You see the shirt I have on? See the shirt I got on the New York Jets? That's right. Yeah, man. I make all the guys that used to work for me give me shirts every year. <laughs> I, got, I have a closet full. I got them from all over. I got shirts from everybody. I love That's it. Awesome. I'm so proud of it that they've done it. And you know what? I always, in the book, you'll see, I refer to them 
the guys that really did it. They're my guys. That's how I refer to them. These, these guys, these are my guys. I used right. to tell the coaches, they're my guys. Leave me alone. And they don't bother us. <laughs> We're going to help you win the football game. And, and it was so much. I believed in it. It was a tremendous part of the game. It's what I wanted to tell a great story about, how it happened. And then you're not only hearing me tell the story in the book, but then you're hearing Leon Washington because we interviewed those guys. You know, I wrote the book, but Barry Wilner helped me and he interviewed the players because I did the ones I set it up, but then he would interview them. I let them know I did not want to interview them. I wanted them to tell the story in their own words. Now, some of it, whoa, some of it's pretty X-rated. Now, it's a little tough, but it's just, it's reality. It's who we were. It's what we did. And, and to me, that's an incredible, like the guys you mentioned, the names you mentioned, come on, they don't get any better than that. Those guys. So I had a ball up there. I mean, you were, if you were going to play us back in those days and you had to line up against Brad Smith and Eric Smith and James Ahitabo, James Ahitabo would knock your head off. Yep. I mean, you talk about a tough guy. He was tough. I mean, these kids were tough. You know, um, just, just that, that whole group of them, you know, that, that were just so dominant players and, and made a big difference in, in the football game. And, and you know, we could set a tempo. You know, Chris Hayes back in the day is one of my first New York Jets. That was one of my guys. Kenyatta, Kenyatta Wright, the linebacker. Ken, Kenyatta, and he, you, you telling you what? You come on the field, you better get your helmet on when you're playing against this guy. And this is who we were. Right. So I believe that we were the most physical special teams unit that ever played in the National Football League history. That's, and I'll, I'll fight that with anybody. Cause, and we did it right. There's no cheap shots or, you know, I wasn't into that. But you, you don't you look out, you better look around because somebody's going to somebody's really coming. We played hard and clean and it was fun. You know, there were parts that I, I didn't do as well. You know, at New York, I always had, I had trouble, <laughs> trouble trying to find a punter. I had a good punt team. I said anybody could punt. Uh, and part of my fault. You know, I, I I'm stubborn and but, you know, I sometimes think I can make a guy a great player and maybe I, I can't. But we had great kickers and our numbers were good. We had you know, when I was there. I had nine, nine different football players that led the National Football League in returns. Well, who do you think is going to break that record? Right. Nobody ever, because there's no returns today. The play's almost gone. I'll give you a good instance. Uh, think of this one. You remember the playoff game when we were in, in Indianapolis and we beat Peyton Manning in his last game. Remember that game? And then we went yeah. to the next round of the playoffs. Okay. We beat the Colts. All right. They scored and went ahead, and they had to kick off to us. And I'm thinking to myself, I know this guy. I, I know this kicker. He's going to try to drive it out for a touchback, okay? He's going to kick it to our right side. So I Now, Brad Smith had gotten hurt, and I put in Antonio Cromartie. Put Crow in. I said, look, just make one read. I'm going to run. I called it Miami right. I had double team of five, da 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 Well, we caught the ball about four or five yards deep. He ran it up, up, up to the 50-yard line. We completed a pass, kicked the field goal, and won the football game. If that game were being played today, that kickoff would be a touchback. We would start at the 20. We wouldn't have time, and we would have lost the football game. So I like the game the way it used to be played. I loved having a chance to win the football game. Crow came on the field. He said to me, Coach, I can get it. He said, I'll, I'll get it for you. And he ran up to the 50. Next thing you know, we win the game. That, to me, that's what I believe – and that's kind of what we had at New York. We had that. We had it going. And the fans loved it. And I loved it. I used to love to go into the city. And it was a great, great thrill. And uh, someone asked me, you know, Mike, uh, is there anything you really miss? And I said, well, I miss the innovation. I do. I miss some of that. I miss some of the interaction with some of the players. But the thing I miss the most, coming out of that tunnel in front of that 80,000 people, I want to, there's, and I did it 657 times and, and I'm the, I'm the luckiest person in the world because there's nothing like that. And that jet crowd, when they're rocking and rolling, which we were every week back then, it doesn't get any better guys. It doesn't get any better than that. Absolutely coach. And that's an amazing story. And, and listen, coach, one of the things that stood out to me is that you said the relationship you had with your players uh, especially on special teams that's that's missing. You know, you had guys like Bart Scott who wound up becoming a big-time Jet player in all, all of our memories. He started off in Baltimore on special teams. Mm -hmm. How many guys are missing opportunities with the loss of this? 
Um, uh, it a lot. Oh, but don't forget one thing about Bart, though. You can tell him I said this when he was at Baltimore. We used to beat the hell out of him, so he didn't scare us when he was at Baltimore. <laughs> Best thing Absolutely. he ever did. Best thing he ever did was come to New York and become a starter. Absolutely, <laughs> That's the best thing he ever did. And it's and career. it's and it's interesting, Coach, because you know the everything there. It seemed like it was about the players. You know, the one of the first things that you mentioned was that hey, these are my guys. Thank you. And when and when you hear Rex Ryan, one of the first things that he always said, these are my guys. And I think the fans felt that passion to the game of football to the New York Jets that we hadn't seen prior going back all the way to Bill Parcells. So we definitely appreciate all the energy and life that you've you poured into the New York Jets at the time I, that you were there in special I, teams. I, I, and we're I missing it now. Let's I make sure we play saying, like yes. the New York Jets. Let's make sure we play <laughs> like the New York Jets. Let's Rex. I just talked to Rex. He's a character. What but, was it know, like coaching with Rex, let, coach? Let me, let me just give you one thing first. About sure. that. For, don't think for a second, because they're my guys, that, that I placated. I was tough. My, my goal was that here's what I used to think. You know, I don't care if I'm, I'm a popular coach. I really don't. Where I, you know where I want to be a popular coach? I want to be a popular coach on Monday. When I'm sitting in that film room and I'm saying to that guy and I'm showing that play and I'm telling him what a great job he did. Now, on Thursday, on Thursday, he might have wanted to kill me. Cause I was so tough on him, but on Monday, then he knew now, now, now you're one of my guys. That's the difference. And I was not afraid to do that. I was, I was honest. You know, I, I was reactionary. People say like, Oh, you were old school. Well, I'm getting older. Yeah, I guess I am old school, but please, you know, but that's not, you know, I just reacted to what I saw when it was good. I expounded on it. When it was bad, I let you know. And there was, that's it. And everybody was treated fairly. I didn't care who, where they came from. I could care less. I, you know, I just, I knew we could put together a, a big package. Working with Rex, I'll answer your question. It was fun. It was fun. Rex had a philosophy. Now, you know, he, he wanted to run the football, which, by the way, back then, you know, think of that offensive line we had, okay? The Brickishaw Ferguson, Nick Mangold. Oh, you know, we had a guy in a guard named Alan Fanica. He's only in the Hall of Fame. Damian Woody. You know, and guess who's carrying the ball? LaDamian Tomlinson, Thomas Jones. We were good. That football team was good. I mean, they could, these guys could play. And they were great people. You know, we had no off-the-field problems. They were fun. Defense, you got Darrell Rivas and those guys. You know, and Bart, of course, and David Harris. You know, Jimmy Leonard's a safety. Tony Cromartie. Come on, this is a good football team. You know, those are guys. And I had a freaking all-star team. I had an all-star team. Everybody I had could knock your head off. I mean, that's who we were. You know, I mean, we had, I remember there was a, there's a clip of a play uh, that I watched not too long ago, actually. We ran a touchdown against the Colts. And going into the end zone on this touchdown, and I'll, I'll bet a lot of money on this. I'll bet anybody a lot of money on this one. Going into the end zone, Justin, Justin Miller was the returner, who led the league, by the way, went to Pro Bowl. Justin is being surrounded by five guys, okay? Leon Washington, Brad Smith, Eric Smith, and um, oh, the other guy. I just got, I can't think of his name. Oh, B.J. Askew. B.J. Askew. Okay. Three of those guys that ran into the end zone on that touchdown, three of those players led the National Football League in returns. Now, you show me a clip of a football team scoring a touchdown with three guys running into the end zone where all three led the league. Justin Miller, Leon Washington, Brad Smith. I'm, I'll, I'll bet anybody you're never going to find that. You're never going to find it because that was so special. That's who we were. That's what we could do. And, and that's, that's what helped us be a playoff team. Did it make us one? No, of course not. There's lots of things that make a playoff team, but that helped us. And every week, I believed we would beat our opponents. And most of the time we did. Yeah, sure, there are times when we didn't, but they're – pretty damn few. And so it was a cool time. It was a great time. And all of a sudden, we're going to drift away from that. We're going to become, you know, the New England Patriots South Branch with the quarterback. Oh, please give me a break. You'll get me you'll get me going. I won't even start and I'll stop now. I'll be ruining my night. <laughs> Mike, Mike, with all those players that you reference, 
talk to us about how you were involved in the selection of those players. Like, how did you like get involved in the draft process to really fight for your guy? Maybe, you know, maybe it's not the first round pick where you're taking a special teams talent, but third round, fourth round, fifth round, where you start shaking Mike Tannenbaum in the corner and saying, get this guy. There were times, you know, back when Mike was a, uh, personnel director, be honest with you, I, I didn't have to do that. I, Mike was, I, I really, I, I liked Mike when, when he became general manager, not quite so much after that, but uh, back then, no, it was great. No, most of the time, everybody left me alone. They left me get the guys I wanted. Now, there were times at the very end, I mean, my last year, you know, Mike made a change in the draft and, and I, I didn't, I wasn't in the draft room. I knew it was time to go home. I mean, I, I, I Woody Johnson called me down to his office and he didn't want me to leave. He said, I, I don't want you to leave. I want you to stay. And I said, Woody, it's real, it's real simple for me. I, I got a choice. I'm going to live. I'm, I'm going to be in one of two places next year. I'm going to be at my home in Florida or I'm going to be in Rikers because there's a chance I'm going to kill Mike Tannenbaum. So I said, you look at it any way you want. I'm going to be in one of those two spots. So <laughs> that's, that's just the way it's going to be. I'm sorry. No disrespect, but that's just the reality. And so it was frustrating that, that, that we were going to change that philosophy. But normally... No, everybody, even back to Jimmy Johnson, Coach Shula let me pick guys. I mean, I got Bernie, Bernie Parmerly back there. And, you know, that's a great story in the book. If you guys haven't read it, you guys better read it because it's a cool book. And, and, you know, those kind of stories were great stories. And then the Jets guys, now I found them everywhere. I could find them anywhere. And uh, and because, you know, it, it's tough today. Today you can't do it. I've talked to a number of head coaches today that have asked me, you know, if I were coaching today, how would I build my roster? Well, I would do it differently. I would do it much differently because the game has changed and you have to make changes with it. Coach, how, how would you look at it is for, if you were putting together something, how, how would you do it? How would you build a roster? Today? Well, what you can't do is you can't have a whole group of little peanuts that run around like I used to have, you know, on the team. Because I had like the Larry Izzo's and Bernie Parmelees and I had, the, you know, all those guys that are kind of, you, know, you, you can't do that today. What you have to do, build your punt team. Build your punt team first. And everything else, you have to figure it out. I would fight for more tight ends, and I'd find a place to use them. I would also fight for more. A defensive line coach would love me. He would love me because if he wants to dress seven, I want to dress nine. I want to get. I want to take two more. Now, they're going to be. they're going to be kind of pass rush guys, but they're going to help me because the game has changed so much that it's played differently. You don't have as many plays. You know, you don't have to, the kickoff and kickoff return are so differently today. You're not out in the middle of the field covering kickoffs today. You know, most of the time it's a touchback, though it's a different game. You know, I'll design a punt block. Matter of fact, I, I showed someone, I had a drawing I was doing this the other day for him. Actually, I, well, I was at the Jets. That's where I did it. I did it with one of their personnel guys up there. I was drawing it up for him. The block that I used when I was at the Vikings, against the Vikings when I was at the Saints. And I lined up these defensive linemen inside, and then I pressured with Taysom Hill from the outside. And the guy drove the ball right into my big defensive lineman. We blocked it, should have won the game. I mean, that, that would have won the game for us. Yeah, that was that game where they had that crazy play up at, up at Minnesota, you know, that Minnesota miracle. Uh, yeah. which should have never happened if we're playing three deep instead of two deep, by the way. But I can coach defense, too. Uh, it's just one of those types of things. But, you know, it, it um, you got you, that's the changes I would make. I, I would I would give up a couple of those guys and then I, I, I'd build my roster a little bit differently, uh, which would, you know, you, ha you have to kind of do that today. It's just a little bit different game. Now, I don't like it as well, to tell you the truth. I'll, I'll give you a number. I'm, I'll give you a good number. You guys want to hear a good number? Absolutely. Okay. My first 30 years in the National Football League, my first 30 years, all right? Um, not counting PATs and field goals, not counting those plays, whatever they were, either kicking them or defending them, not counting those plays. I averaged 22 plays a game. That's what I averaged. I'm talking about punts, punt return, kickoff, kickoff return. Remember, back then, almost every kickoff is, is, is a play. Okay, my two years with the New Orleans Saints, seven. Wow. I went from 22 to seven. Now, see, I'm not counting, you know, the kickoff for a touchback. I mean, come on, I'm 74. I could run on a damn field today. Give me a break. You know, come on. It's, it's, it's just different. You know, 22 to seven. Wow. I talked to special teams coaches at the combine this year. I let them know. I said, guys, if you don't get out ahead of this and find a way 
There's going to be an owner walk in one of these days to his head coach and say, why am I paying this guy a million dollars when he's coaching eight plays? Right. And you better, I told him, I said, you better get an answer because that seat you're sitting in, I said, I'm the one who gave you that seat. Now, you know, they, they don't like my arrogance. You know, they don't, they don't like that. But I don't care. I, I, don't, I only like about three or four of them anyway. Uh, that's just the reality. You know, that's the reality of today. You have to be smart. You have to, as a special teams coach today, you have to coach situations. You have to win the situation because you're not going to get every single play like you used to get. So you got to win those. And then you win those. Now you're going to help win the game. But it's just different. It's different. That's why I don't want to do it anymore. Well, taking it back to a, a little bit further, Coach, because one of our fans in here had a question of your first job, and you just mentioned that you coach defense as well. I noticed in 77 at Indiana State, you were a defensive line coach and linebackers coach. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that time period and, and how sure. it differs from today? Well, you know, when you're you're a young guy, you know, you're going to coach. Yeah, I coach in high school like we all, you know, you start somewhere. I started as a player and um, I, I, I wanted to keep playing. I went to a workout camp with Dallas. I was there about a half hour. And they let me go. <laughs> they were smart. I was a good college player. I, play, I I had a good career. Anyway, I was coaching defense. I used to love defense. I was a defensive coordinator in high school. And then and, and in college, when I was at Indiana University, I coached all the young kids on defense. You know, with a graduate, I was a graduate assistant and I coached the scout team guys. You know, that's what I did. And then I then I went to the University of Dayton as an offensive line coach. And I went to Indiana as a defense of Indiana State as a defensive line and linebackers guy. So, you know, I had my hands in a little bit of all of it. So I really enjoyed that working my way up up the ladder. And then um, that then, you know, I kind of got I went down to Texas Christian and coached down there as an offensive line guy. And then I got hired at the Colts. Frank Cush, and it's a great story. You got to read the story in the book because it's a cool story how I got in the league. I mean, my, my path is very different from most people's. It's just different. It just, it's just, it's just different. Um, you know, so here I am. Uh, I get this job with the, I'm interviewing for this job at the Colts. And the Frank said, he said, well, I need a, I need a tight ends coach. He said, I need a strength coach. He said, I need a special teams coach. I need an assistant offensive line, and I need a guy. I said, okay, I can do them all. <laughs> he started to laugh. I said, no, I can do them all. Well, you know, I was, I, I was a little bit, I'm not, I, I couldn't do them all, but I did them all. I, that's what I got. That's how I got hired. So, you know, you just learn how to do things. You figure it out. You figure out how to, you know, get your job done. And then, then it went on from there, you know, and evolved. And I always, when I went to Miami, I coached tight ends and I helped with our offensive line a lot at Miami. Our, our line coach had gotten a little older and he had some health issues. And, you know, I mean, I, I loved doing that. I mean, that was, you know, Dan Marino and those guys. So it was, that was pretty fun coaching with those guys. Cause Dan was, <laughs> Dan, throw it over there wherever you want, buddy. <laughs> Whatever you want to do, go ahead. And it was just a lot of fun. And we were, and with Coach Shula was incredible learning experience. He was a brilliant, brilliant man. First class gentleman, you know, handled a job. He handled a profession well. You know, when you, when you see Don Shula and you think here's, this is a head coach in the National Football League. That's kind of that that that's pretty good image of what it maybe could look like, you know, a guy like that. He was he he was just a brilliant, brilliant man and a good experience for me, though. So, so yeah, I did a little bit of everything. I did a little bit of everything. Awesome. Hey, how big was it for you to get to prepare to face against Bill Belichick? Like the fans get so excited to face the Patriots and use them as a measuring stick, but as a coach, how did you approach that week? Oh, he was, I love playing against him because for me, he was easy to play against. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Bill's a very good coach, and he knows how to break the game down. He was not going to let – he was not going to let the special teams win the football game. So he was very, very conservative, very conservative. So I would try all kinds of stuff. I mean, I'd, I'd get a punt team and put guys in motion, and he'd be over there yelling, fake, fake, and I'm thinking, I'm not going to fake. I just don't have anybody that can punt. So I'm hoping you don't do anything over there. You know, just, I'm trying to scare you, but I don't have a good weapon here. And I knew I could get him on kickoff return. I always used to line my front line up because remember you got a 10 yard restraining area where you can't line up in. Right. And then, and then I lined my guys up three back. So we would be 13 yards from the ball against him. I'd line him up 18 yards deep to get back. Cause I knew he wasn't going to, he wasn't going to try an onside kick. I used to give it to him. He wasn't going to do it. He's not, you think he's going to, onside kick to try to beat the Jets. Uh, now, he wasn't going to let that happen. He had a philosophy. Though I used to love playing against him. I blocked kicks on him. I knew I could beat him. 
I just know I and no, I didn't always. Of course not, because they're good. They do it. You know, Bill's a good coach. He knows what he's doing. He always had a very separate plan, which guys used to tell me that that's that, you know, basically what I do. I do a separate plan every single week, and they compared me to him in that regard. But I, I loved going against him. He's very competitive. Some of the crazy things that he got involved in, I always felt it's a shame that he got involved in it. And trust me, he did them all. He, everybody don't thinks he did it. He did them all. They did, they did them all. Uh, he, he doesn't need to do any of them. He, he's a good coach and they got good players. You know, and he's going to film the defensive coordinator and that kind of stupid junk. Come on, Bill. You know, the, 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 I mean, it's just stupid stuff. It is. You know, it got me one time. You know, I got caught in it one time. We were playing. We were playing the, the, the Dolphins. And my good friend used to play for the Dolphins. God rest his soul. Jim Mandich was my buddy. And he did their radio. And after the game, he called me and he said, Mike, you better get on. He said, I, we won the game. He said, you better get on top of something because you had kind of a crummy incident on your sideline. Oh, what the hell? So then I find out that our strength coach had taken two of our undressed players and they stood up and they made a little wall. And when the other team's gunner or flyer came down the field, they were standing there in case he got pushed out, they'd be in the road. All right. Well, then our strength coach stuck his knee out and tripped him. All right. Now, I got blamed. I got blamed. I had nothing to do with it. I, I would have killed him if I knew he did that. Uh, in fact, in fact, he got he got suspended without pay and eventually got fired for another reason. That really wasn't the reason. But anyway, what I used to do when when our team was punting the football or anybody punting, I would walk down the field to the ball and I would step back away and I would be right at the ball. I didn't care where it was. I didn't care if it was on the five yard line. I walked down there every single time. And then when the ball was punted, I would walk out toward the field to see, keep it with my, when I had the trouble with my leg, you know, I, I didn't want to be in the middle where somebody's going to be running me over. So I used to be careful, but then I used to get in, you know, it got in all kind of trouble because I'd walk out on the field, but the ball's way at the other end. You know, I said, leave me alone. I'm not bothering anybody. Anyway, uh, we got hammered pretty good. I got investigated. They, and, and the, you know, so they came in and they were looking at me and I said, yeah, you know, guys, you're blaming me for something, but you're looking at the wrong team. If you want to take a good look at and I showed them a New England Patriots tape and the Patriots would line up their half of their team in a big line on the sideline. You know, we had we had three idiots You know, they got the Michigan marching band lined up over there. It was ridiculous. So the Patriots got in trouble. They got boy, they caught hell. They got in trouble. I didn't because they knew I didn't do it. Anyway, I was doing a um, radio broadcast with a ESPN out of Chicago. And the guy was asking me the questions and I told him, I said, look, I don't do that stupid. It just was dumb. You know, if you get knocked out of bounds, I think you're on your own anyway. So I'm not going to contribute. It was, it was just ridiculous. Um, I didn't sell anybody out, but I didn't do it. So I just said, look, I didn't do it. I said, you know, though, if you really want to see somebody that knows how to do it, you ought to take a look at one of those teams up north. Now, that's an exact quote, exact quote. I got fined $100,000. <laughs> yeah, me, 100000 I went, whoa, because you're not allowed to criticize another team on the air like that. I got smacked. I got smacked. I, Woody, Woody Johnson helped me a little bit. He's got more money than me, so he gave me a hand. But, oh, yeah, it was a tough one. And I didn't do it. It was just so stupid. You know, we, we line up three idiots, like the three stooges. You know, they got the whole team lined up. I mean, come on, Bill. You know, he, he did some things. He's an he's a outstanding coach with a great team. To get involved in that other kind of junk, come on, give me a break. He, to me, that's not him. That's not his strength. He should have. He should stay the hell away from all that. <laughs> he didn't need that to win. Mike, do you reference like playing Pro Marty on that kick return? Were there a lot of players that lobbied to play special teams? A lot of the natural skill positions that maybe came to you and was like, Mike, that's throw me in a play. That's a and good then, question. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a, that's that, that's a good point. Yeah, some guys really did like to do a little. I mean, at Miami, you know, Jason Taylor and Trace Armstrong were on my punt return team. They would rush from the. Well, it's two of the best pass rushers in football. I mean, one of them's in the Hall of Fame. You know, I mean, they, and I would use them to put pressure on the punter, and they did a great job. But you know, they're probably going to play. You know, what four plays a game, five plays maybe. You know, something like that. You know, uh, that that that's really all there was to that. Um, yeah, you know that that's that's really what it just wasn't that much those guys they um 
Uh, they, they love to do it a little bit. Zach Thomas wouldn't let me take him off of anything. Oh, he always wanted to be there. When I needed Drell Rivas, he, he'd go do what I asked him to do. And that wasn't, it was very, not very often. Of course not. He had plenty on his plate. But most of the guys were pretty good. The, every, every once in a while, though, you, want it, you run into someone that does, does not want to do it. I mean, I was with the Saints, and Sean Payton really wanted me to use this one guy who's a starter. And I, and I tried. I knew it wasn't going to work, and it didn't, and the guy screwed everything up. And I, I went and talked to him, told him I don't ever talk to him again. Stay the hell out of my meetings. I'll see him at the banquet and uh, leave me alone. And that worked out fine. After that, we got along great because I didn't, I didn't want to ever see him again. So <laughs> sometimes we all just don't like each other that well. It's just it's okay. But a lot of the guys, they like doing a little something here or there. Yeah, they, some of the starters, they, they were great for me. So, yeah, when I needed somebody, I, I'm going I'm to give you a name of a guy with the New York Jets that was as good as football. The fact that he didn't finish with the Jets is just a crime. Jonathan Vilma. You want to see a good football player? Jonathan Vilma. You know, I remember one year he led the league in tackles. For me, for me, he was on our field goal block team, of course, no big deal. He was on our punt return team. He covered every single kickoff that year. And at the end, when we were in a playoff race, he was on the punt team. He was on the, that's how much he played. The guy was phenomenal. I loved him. I mean, he could play and he was tough. I have a clip of when we were playing the Rams when they were at St. Louis. He hit this kid. And I'm, I'm telling you, there's still some place out there where that kid's part of him is still laying somewhere out there after Jonathan hit him. I mean, he hit him so hard. Oh my goodness gracious. Jonathan Vilma, nah, so you, you bring up a good point, and it's one of my favorite things. Uh, most guys were tremendous every now and then, you know, every now and then I had a bonehead once in a while, not too often. That David Harris guy they replaced him with was okay, though. He was all right. Dave, David was a very good player, good player, great kid, too. Boy, good, big Michigan guy, good leader. Yeah, David Harris was a good player. Yeah. So... Regarding the Jets' current culture and circumstances, like how do you kind of look at the new regime? Because it's got to be part culture, but you're still measured in wins and losses and those sure. types of things, Mike. Like when you look at this Jets team, I know everyone's kind of excited about the direction, but they almost want the W's to come with it. How do you kind of look at this team and like evaluate? When I, I went up there a couple of weeks ago, and I was I was very excited. I like the head coach. I think he's, I like him. I like his attitude. I think he's a very knowledgeable guy. I think he's got a good approach. Their practice was very disciplined. I saw, I saw good things in their practice. And so, you know, you, you, you want to, you, you want to feel good, but you got to go out and do it. You know, preseason games are interesting. You know, you don't, you can't really worry about the, the, the score at the end, even though they do keep score Yeah, and you're trying to win the game, of course, but you, you divide the game into segments. You want to win. When, you're, when your top guys are going against their top guys, you, you want to win that segment, okay? You want to do that. Well, the Jets start off, you know, Philadelphia goes all the way down the field, 80 yards, boom, 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 touchdown. And then the Jets turn around, turn the ball over, and give them a touchdown. So the two things that you're really going to look for, you can't get too excited about. That was a, to me, that was a failure in both of those. You, you just don't want to, you've got to play better than that. I mean, look, if... If that had been the other way around, if the Jets had come out, driven right down the field, boom, 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 and got a touchdown and turned the ball over and got a touchdown and then went on at the end of the game and lost at the end of the game, I'd think to myself, look out, guys, this Jet team's, this jet team's pretty good. I don't like the way they started. I was disappointed. But I think they're better prepared. I like what they've done in the offseason. I like this head coach. I think he's got a chance. I'm going to really root for them. But – I want to see it. You know, the quarterback's got to make the strides. I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for him. I've seen some good things, but I, I, like everyone else, have still got a couple questions that, that we're not sure of. But it's a good enough football team from what I, at least what I believe. I, I, don't, I don't study them like I used to study, but um, I think it's a good enough football team to, to get the Jet fans excited again, and, and I am hope that they get back in it. But what they need to do these next two weeks – when they, I know Atlanta's coming in. I talked to one of the guys today, Atlanta. Atlanta's coming in. Atlanta's general manager, uh, Terry Fontenot, is a good friend of mine. We used to work together in, in uh, New Orleans. Um, the, the practices are key. This is where you're going to get your team ready. 
next week when they practice against the Giants. Get your team ready. That's where you get it ready. Because a couple weeks from now, they're going to kick that off. It's going to count. It's going to be for real. Though these couple weeks, I used to love to practice against other teams. I loved it. Because my only goal was to beat the hell out of them. I mean, to do it fair, but to beat them up. I mean, that was my goal. I, I went in and we, I threw everything out. I mean, we did everything. I, I used to love to go against the Giants. I respect the Giants. But I used to love to play them in the preseason because the first half, I was going to try to kill them. After that, I was, you know, I wasn't going to try to block a punt on some poor kid that's, you know, I wasn't going to do something stupid. That's not, that's not football. But right up front, I wanted to let them know, well, you're, you're in the wrong side of town, guys, because this, this guy's in green are going to knock the hell out of you. And I loved it. I loved going against them. And, and, I, and I, got, I think I got the edge. I think I got a big-time edge playing them. I, I, I really believe that. We, we, would, we, we could beat them up a little bit. But I respected them. Don't think I don't for a second. I respect that, that football team. So... I don't know if you're going to, if the jets are going to do it, this, this is a the time they got to start pulling this thing up. Somebody's got to say, Hey, enough's enough. Let's go. Because in this business, everybody's pretty good. I mean, everybody, these are all good players. There's no excuse for not getting the job done. It's not like, what do you think the guys in LA are because they're, you know, they, they probably have five football players that dominate their team. That's what they got. That's pretty good ones though. <laughs> they're pretty good. Okay. I mean, so that, it's, that's you're going to tell me I'm going to walk out there in the National Football League and I'm going to think that someone else is better than me? Nah, come on. That's not the way you got to do it. That's ridiculous. And coach, uh, as far as the current Jets, is their field goal kicking has been awful for the Jets uh, for quite a bit of time the last couple of seasons. It's just been tough for the teams to get those extra points in. Um, they're always playing from behind. Uh, Greg Zerline versus Eddie Pinero. Um, it seems like Zerline has the go-ahead right now. What's your outlook on it? Okay, I'm, I'm not an expert on I know Zerline a little better, of course. But don't forget, though, it was only a handful of years ago they had a guy went to Pro Bowl and they let him get away. You can't do that today. I mean, if you think if you're the New York Jets, you're, you're not Tom Brady. You're not going to score 50, 60 points. You're going to have tight, close games. Field goals are very makeable today. I'll, 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 you stop and think first. First of all, they're kicking a very friendly ball. The ball's buffed up a little bit. I don't, I don't go into what they do to it, but it's buffed up a little bit. It's legal, but it's buffed up. It's a friendly ball. When's the last time you saw a bad snap? You don't see bad snaps anymore. They just don't do it because you're not allowed to line up somebody on the guy. So the snap's perfect. Everybody knows how to hold. They have their back leg up off the ground. They take the snap. They guide their inside elbow into the inside part of the knee. That puts the ball down perfectly. So you've got a perfect snap, perfect hold. You can't push up in the middle anymore. You can't use leverage to jump over. Or you can't do these types of things. Get off times have shrunk from about from snap to kick from about 1.3 to about 1.28 or 27. So it's difficult to get them. So the point is, everything is set up for the kicker. If I don't have a kicker, at kicking in the 90 percentile, I'm finding a new kicker because that's how you're going to win some games. Those points have to be automatic. And there's guys out there that can do it. You just got to go get the right guy because the Jets are going to be in tight games. They're going to be in the tight game. They need to make that kick. You know, that's that's to me. The, get the guy that can do it because it's not that difficult. You've got to find it. Absolutely, Coach. I mean, this has been unbelievable knowledge that you dropped on us today. Really appreciate you coming through. And just, I mean, just like a lot of the comments inside the chat section, I can listen to you talk literally for hours on football and your story. It's, a, it's really a blessing for us here at Jets Guru because we've been trying to get people with such a, a football acumen as yourself onto the show to just drop some of the in-game knowledge and the stories that you have today. We'd love to have you on again sometime in the sure. future if you'll have us. And, and we really, really appreciate it, Coach. Just wonderful content. And everybody out there, figure it out by Mike Westoff. I mean, can you really say there's a more fiery coach that you've ever heard spoke? I don't think you can. Uh, we miss this type of coaching, uh, this type of attitude and passion. And not just sports, but many areas of life where it could be needed. And uh, I thank you so much. And, and I know Kevin does as well. Oh, thank, thank you, guys. 
you know, my books, figure it out. It can be got at Amazon. You can get on Amazon anywhere. Just order it, figure it out. They'll deliver it right to your house. Um, my time at New York was tremendous. I love the football. Uh, I, I love the city. You know, I mean, the, the tremendous Sloan Kettering, the incredible hospital saved my life. I mean, I'm here doing what I'm doing because of that great place. And so you guys in New York have got a lot of good things going for you, of which I was very proud to be a part of. And so for me to come on with you guys anytime, thank you for uh, letting me. And, and I, th I hope people get the book because I think they'll enjoy it. It's a good read. You know, it's, it's what, $20? Come on, give me a break. It, it's uh, um, I'm proud of it. And I'm proud of the help that I got to write it. And I think when you read about the great guys that participated and did it, it's really a cool story because that part of the game has vastly changed. Mike, there's a couple questions in the comments about you going to some book signings. I think yes. I saw on your Twitter, don't you have a couple coming up or maybe they Yeah, we've got go two the you? weekend, the weekend of September 17th, there's one in Long Island and one in Staten Island. Yes. Yeah, they'll be there. I'll, I'll be there. I'm going to have some books. We'll be able to talk and enjoy it. The season will be getting going. I want to talk about that and hopefully you know, I'm I'm still a fan. I'm 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 a Jets fan. I mean, I love New Orleans because I had great time there. I liked Miami when you know Coach Shula, but Miami's changed a lot. Miami's, you know, I mean, they're 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 I'm, I love them, but you know, I kind of want to. I don't like them sometimes. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't know Miami, New Orleans, New York. Those are some pretty like cool places to coach, man. They're oh, fun. Was great. To eat. It was great. Oh, they're loved, fun places. The New Orleans Saints. Football. The New Orleans the New Orleans Saints was really fun. They're 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 a great organization. They do a great job. I mean, it was fun to be there with Sean Payton. Sean will get back in the league as a head coach. Somebody get a heck of a good coach there. You know, I was there with Drew Brees, and, you know, we went to those two years. We should have gone to Super Bowl. We were good. We were really good. And, you know, they. I was really enjoying working at media in New York. I was doing SMY television, and I get a call, you know, with Ray Lucas. Ray and I had a ball. I loved him. He and I were buddies. I really had fun. I think our show was good, too. And I get a call from the Saints. I didn't know anybody. They said, come on, we need help. We think we're pretty good. I, I never met Sean Payton in my life. I didn't know him. I said, okay, I, I went down there. And when I walked in, they were ranked 31st in the NFL. When I left, we were first. So I, I, helped. I helped. Yeah, Coach, most of your coaching career, you spent uh, having your special teams be top 10 or better. And most of that uh, wonderful career of yours, we really appreciate it. I will see you in Staten Island. That's where my base is. So I'll okay. see you on either, the, I think you said the 17th or the 18th there. Yeah, it's right there, yes. Absolutely. Yes. So thank you, Coach. We'll, we'll have you on again. I know the fans are really excited, and they said this is the best episode yet. So much <laughs> blessings for sure to you, uh, you guys, and yours. You, did, you guys do a good job. You have good questions. You're prepared. I mean, people should people should tune you in. I think you do a – I've done a bunch of these. You, you guys did a very nice job, so thank you. Thank you very much, Coach. We'll catch you again soon. And to everybody out there, as always, please check us out on YouTube, Jets Guru, on Facebook, Jets Guru, and at Guru Jets on Twitter for up-to-date New York Jets fan news. Please check out Live Rounds and all the other Jet pages around here. We don't like to just say we're the best. We're a community out here. So please check out all the great pages that we share. Thanks to JR, wonderful producer, for reaching out to Mike and his company. And it's, he's just been a blessing to the show. JR, do you have anything? I'm going to leave the last question of the night to you, the producer. How's it going, Mike? The uh, last Good. question of the night would be, who was your favorite all-time player coaching on special teams? I know <laughs> it's a tough really, one. <laughs> that's a tough one. That's really a tough one. I, I'm going to tell you what. I, I'm going to stick with the Jets since you guys are Jets. And I'm going to go back to my first guy back there with Chris Hayes. I thought Chris was just a remarkable player. And then, and then you can't get away from Leon Washington. Yeah. I mean, what Leon did, Leon won games for the New York. That's what those two yeah. guys did. Those two guys won games and won playoff games. So I'm going to stick, since it's a New York Jets show, I'm going to stick with those guys. And I, I loved them. We had a ball. Awesome. Thank you so much, Coach. And we'll see Thank you, you so much. next Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. As always, appreciate the support. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. I can feel it, I can feel it, I can feel it.